On this week's show, we spotlight sexual violence awareness efforts on campus, visual artist Hazel Schaus, and House Football's Crutch Game. Lawrenceville's 10-minute newscast begins right now. From the studios inside the Lawrenceville School's historic Pop Hall, this is L10 with Aiden Duffy. Hello and welcome to this week's show. On Monday night in the Woods Memorial Hall Healy Room, historians Annette Gordon-Reed and Peter Onif gave a lecture on Jefferson, Democracy and Race. Co-authors of Most Blessed of the Patriarchs, Thomas Jefferson and the Empire of the Imagination, Professors Gordon-Reed and Onif talked about the complicated story of democracy in America and its future. If the Republic survives, we have to act. It's urgent, but we can't act until you are ready to act, enlightened young people, and to vote against your self-interest. On Wednesday, Lawrenceville held its annual community Halloween party. Hundreds of local children from disadvantaged backgrounds came to campus for Halloween revelry. From the haunted house in the Kirby Arts Center to hayrides around campus, games, music, food booths, and more, Laurentians enjoyed entertaining the children. The groundbreaking ceremony for the new Gru Center for Art and Design was held today. This expansion of the Gru Center of Visual Arts will accommodate a creative design center and maker space. Big Red Boys senior crew placed 12th competing against a host of international competitors at the head of the Charles Regatta in Boston on Saturday. Finishing the three mile course in 1830, the four comprised of fifth formers Gardner Howe, Kevin Chow and Thomas Schultz and fourth former Nicholas Clark was coxed by third former Jack Hallinan. The girls cross country team won the state championship title on Wednesday at Blair Academy. Perfectly executing their race plan, the team captured the title after a loss to the Pingree School last year. Sexual violence prevention begins with dialogue. News correspondent Bernice Hightower talks with student council, school administrators, and students to learn how the community is raising awareness about this important issue. The national conversations around the confirmation hearings of Brett Kavanaugh have brought the school community together in discussion. Student Council and Diversity Council decided to hold an open source conversation centered around the topic of sexual assault. I sat down with school president Trevor White and diversity rep Shazmina Khan to talk about their preparations and goals for the event. So what exactly is an open source conversation? Open source conversations specifically allow for students to focus on specific topics. So there'll be rooms dedicated to a couple different topics that fall under the same umbrella idea but give students an ability to explore multiple topics while in one sitting in one conversation. So what was it that led Student Council and Diversity Council to organize this particular open source conversation? Yeah, so after Mr. Murray spoke a bit about the Kavanaugh case and how it applied to our lives at Lawrenceville during school meeting a couple weeks ago, we had a long discussion about it one night in Upper as a whole house and that got me thinking that people were very interested in speaking about it and so I worked with Mrs. Kossoff to start planning uh, a larger event for the entire school community. So then we brought in Diversity Council as well. What are some things you guys want to see as a result of this event? Yeah, so I think we really hope that people use it as a tool to kind of break the Lawrenceville bubble because that's what we intend for it to be. When something large happens outside of the school, we want to give people within the school a platform to talk about it. I checked in with faculty advisors of the two councils, Mrs. Kossoff and Mrs. Akins, to get their perspective and hopes for the discussion. Yeah, so we've kind of gone out into our respective groups and both as a larger group, gone through some potential um, questions that might be asked at the open source conversation. What do you think the best method for diffusing tension between people with opposing views is? I think part of it is actually just beginning to sit down and listen. And, and that's a hard thing to do in this day and age. We are constantly bombarded with images from television that are little sound bites. So we are sound bite culture more than a sit down and really deliberate culture right now. Um, and I think that's part of the purpose of coming into the classroom is to be able to sit and deliberate. If you're looking for fourth former Hazel Schaus, 
You might find her in the art studio, where the visual artist is usually working on a new painting or drawing. L10 visited her and brings you this report. I started drawing like, I can't even remember, like when I was really little I was just always drawing. And then later my mom was like, do you want to be more serious about it? And I was like, yeah, so I started taking classes. Um, and then when I came to Lawrenceville, I obviously like pursued it further and um, this year I had to drop language to take it. Right now we're doing a project about childhood nostalgia and like we're not that old but we're, like looking back into our childhoods at things that are meaningful to us. I chose to do Woody and Buzz from Toy Story. I was asking Mr. Daniel like how do you think I can make them feel like they're alive without having it look like it's just like a scene from the movie and he came up with the idea of having them like showering and I was like okay that's kind of weird. <laughs> so then I just like had them like brushing their teeth in the bathroom and I thought it was funny. I used color pencil which is like my favorite medium just because you can get a lot of detail um, and have it look uh, pretty real. Hopefully. I do a lot of different mediums like paint and drawing um, and we've been doing a lot of charcoal too this year but I really like drawing because it's really like precise and like I'm pretty precise as an artist because I like things to look like crisp so that if I do want to like have a message to come across like it'll be clear what I'm trying to depict. The teachers are really amazing and like I had never painted before with oils and I took Mr. Fitz's painting class and I learned so much. Like, after we're done with projects they hang our stuff around the school so like I get feedback from my friends like oh that was really cool or like I had no idea what that was <laughs> so like I, they're helpful in that way too. I do a lot of it in my room and my roommates in this class too so like we do it together in our room a lot um, and other times we work in the basement of Abbott which is kind of nice it's like a little hideout. Since I've been taking like classes at Lawrenceville I like see things differently like I'll literally be out to dinner and like look at a candle and like take a creepy photo because like I think it'll be cool to paint later so I don't know I just like see things differently because of the classes I've been taking and I think that's cool. As the fall sports season draws to a close the Hamill House football team seeks their first win in three years. Senior features correspondent and member of the squad Thatcher Smith brings us the story. Sam, what do you think the biggest strength of the Hamill House football team is? Uh, we have a lot of managers, so we uh, we stay on top of things. If all our team got hurt, the managers alone could make up a team, and uh, you know we'd be you know in pretty good shape. I think we could actually do better than the actual team. We've lost every single game, um, but we have a chance to beat Kennedy in our next game. Do we have a chance to beat Kennedy in our next game? I think if we're all healthy and we try as hard as we did in the last game, we would. Don't you think so? No, no, you don't. No, I don't. Okay, well, maybe I'm an optimist, but I do think so. So, Gunty, big game this week. We've been preparing all week. What do you think the outcome's going to be? How do you think the team's looking? Uh, the team looks good. We look a, a lot better. We've improved a lot. Um, we look better than we have in weeks past. And I think if we can stick to our game plan and focus on the things we worked on this week in practice, I think I'm confident that we have a good chance of winning. Go! You know, so have called you the greatest house football coach of this year and potentially in the past 10 years. Would you agree with that? Definitely. I would say I'm by far the greatest. Yeah! Yeah, go! Go! That is our show for this Friday, October 26, 2018. From all of us here at L10, thank you so much for watching and good night.